Assalamu alaikum. I am Dr. Sayyid Ali Mardan Azmi. Welcome to my channel. In this lecture, we will briefly review spherical coordinates and then we will learn about how we can integrate a triple integral in spherical coordinates. Spherical coordinate represents a point P in space by the order triplets rho, phi, and theta, in which rho is the distance of the point P from the origin. Phi is the angle that the line OP makes with positive z axis, and theta is the angle from the cylindrical coordinates. So, this is a brief introduction of spherical coordinate system. Next, we have transformation equation. The transformation equation for spherical and Cartesian coordinate system are r is equal to rho sine of phi, x is equal to r cos theta, which is equal to rho sine phi cos theta, z is equal to rho cos of phi, y is equal to r sine theta, which is equal to rho sine phi sine theta. The value of rho is x square plus y square plus z square square root, or you can write it as r square plus z square whole square root. The small differential volume element in spherical coordinates is written as dv is equal to rho square sine phi d rho d phi d theta. Please note that in the process of integration of different integrals, this order remains as it is. Now we will learn question number 21 from exercise 15.7, Thomas Calculus 12th edition book. We have to evaluate the spherical coordinate integral. And in this integral, our most inner variable is rho, our center variable is phi, and our most outer variable is theta. Please note that in spherical coordinate system, this ordering is also fixed, just like cylindrical coordinate systems. We will always perform integration first with respect to rho. Then on the outcomes of integration with respect to rho, we will perform integration with respect to phi. And then after completing the process of integration with respect to phi, we will perform integration with respect to theta. Here, the limits of rho are 0 to 2 sine phi. Limits of phi are 0 to pi and limits of theta are 0 to pi. Please note that when we are performing integration with respect to rho, all other terms containing theta and phi will behave like constants. So in this term, sine of phi is constant with respect to rho. So we can take it outside and we have, can apply the power rule on this term rho square to integrate it. So in the next term, we have done the process of integration sine of phi remain as it is, and the integration of rho square is rho cube over 3 for the given limit 0 to 2 sine of phi. In the next step, we will apply fundamental theorem of calculus, upper limit minus lower limit, making the simplification. We can take 2 cube is 8, 8 by 3 outside, and we are left with sine raised to power 4 phi d phi d theta. Up till here, we have completed the process of integration with respect to rho. Next, we will integrate sine raised to power 4 phi with respect to phi. Please note that in single variable calculus, we have learned that we don't have any direct formula for the integration of sine square or its higher power. So what is the process here? We will, we will try to convert this sine raised to power 4 into power 1 by using the identity. Sine square of x is equal to 1 minus cos of 2x over 2. So in the next step, we can write sine raised to power 4 as sine square phi whole square. And remember, you should have these formulas in your mind before solving this question further. So sine square of phi can be written as 1 minus cos of 2 phi over 2 whole power 2. Opening up the square, we have 1 minus 2 cos of 2 phi plus cos square of 2 phi whole divided by 4. Square of 2 become 4. Now this 4 can be cancelled out with 8 by 3. We can take it, we can take 1 by 4 outside and we can apply integral on each term. So integral of 1 d phi minus integral of cos of 2 phi into 2 plus integral of cos square of 2 phi for the given limit 0 to pi, 0 to pi, 0 to pi. Now 8 and 4 will be balanced each other, cancel out each other, and we are left with 2 only. So we have 2 by 3 here. Integration of 1 will be phi for the given limit 0 to pi. Integration of cos of 2 phi into 2 
2 is the derivative of the angle here, will be sine of 2 phi for the limit 0 to pi. And again, here we have cos square of 2 phi. We don't have any direct formula for the integration of cos square of 2 phi. So we will again apply the formula. So in the next step, after applying the formula, making the simplification, I have 1 by 2 d phi plus 1 by 2 cos of 4 phi. Then from here, you can easily calculate sine of 2 pi and sine of 0 becomes 0. So after simplification, we have from first term pi into 1 by 2 here, limit from 0 to pi d phi. And in order to integrate cos of 4 phi, there is a deficiency that we must need the derivative of angle as a multiply here. So in order to develop it, I have multiplied with 4 and divide with 4. So in the next step, I can perform an integration for the given limits, pi into 1 by 2 phi for the given limit 0 to pi, plus 1 by 2 into 4, sine of 4 phi for the limit 0 to pi. So in the next step, I have 2 by 3 pi into pi by 2 from here. 1 by 8 sine of 4 phi minus sine of 0 when we have applied limits, upper limit minus lower limit. Now sine of 4 pi minus sine of 0 becomes 0. So I am left with pi plus pi by 2. Pi plus pi by 2 becomes 3 by, by by 2. We can take it outside with 2 over 3. And the integration of d theta for the given limits 0 to pi will be theta. In the next step, applying the limits and making the simplification, 3 and 3 will be cancelled out, 2 and 2 will be cancelled out. So I have pi into pi minus 0. So answer is pi square. I hope you have understood this question. Please like, subscribe and share this content with your fellows. Allah Hafiz.